The stalker industry may have the greatest economic impact from BVD PI animals. The reason I say this is uh, in the stalker industry we gather young calves from multiple different origins. Uh, we bring them together uh, after a tremendous amount of stress of going through the auction market system. And in we, if we have any infectious disease in that group of commingled cattle, such as a BVDPI animal, it can have huge uh, sickness effects and mortality effects as well as performance effects in the stalker industry. Um, again, because the stalker calf is at a, a time in his life when uh, the maternal antibody protection is waning, but yet the active protection is not there, it sets them up for uh, what could be the perfect storm. The advantage to testing the stalker calves is to identify if there is a PI animal on the group. He serves as the source to transmit to everybody else in that group that was just purchased. If there is a PI there, uh, he will essentially expose everybody in that group, leading to increased morbidity, increased mortality, and studies have shown a dramatic impact on the performance. There are studies in the feed yard industry, and it shows that um, exposure to a BVDPI animal will cost you around $67 for every animal in the group. Most of that actually is a cost of performance, um, and a, a third of that, so to speak, is because of increased mortality because there's a PI animal in that group. It's easy to uh, minimize those impacts by identifying those PIs as quick as you can after that group is assembled together by ear notching, testing, uh, if there's a PI in the group, quarantine him away from uh, the balance of the population. One of the greatest myths we deal with with BVD PI animals is all my calves look good so I don't have it. And that myth is you can visually identify an animal that is persistently infected and you cannot. These animals will look just like everything else in the herd, but they're carrying this virus daily and spreading it to everybody in there. So visual identification of a PI animal is impossible. The only way to diagnose these animals is via testing. Bovine viral diarrhea device causes basically two infections. Uh, one is called acute or transient infection, and that is just like you or I getting the flu. We get exposed to the virus, uh, we'll become sick for about uh, seven to 10 days. Our immune system will mount a response against the BVD virus and we will clear it from our system. So acutely or transitively infected animals have the virus for about seven to 10 days, the immune system will take care of it. We compare that to the other infection called persistent infection. It's entirely different. Persistently infected calves are only produced in utero and typically between about day 40 and day 120 of gestation. If the mother is exposed to the virus during this critical stage of gestation, she will pass that virus into the uterus, into that fetus. That time frame of 40 to 120 days is when a calf, his immune system is recognizing what is himself. Uh, he does that so his immune system will never mount an immune response against self. So he's identifying this is my heart, this is my liver, this is my skin, these are my eyes, and therefore he will never mount an immune response against that. If BVD virus is there during that process, this is my hoof, this is my liver, this is my heart, this is my BVD virus. And because his immune system will never mount an immune response against BVD, he becomes what we call persistently infected. If he's born and born alive, he will carry this virus his entire life and shed billions of virus particles daily. So we have the acute, transitly infected animal that has it for seven ten, to 10 days and the immune system will clear it. And then we have the persistently infected calf who is born with it, carries it his whole life, and transmits huge volumes of the virus. Bovine viral diarrhea, what do we see when an animal has BVD? Typically nothing. Uh, 70 to 90 percent of the time you don't have any, cl any clinical signs in the animal from BVD virus. It's a subclinical disease producer. What we do see is an increase in respiratory disease, uh, increase in foot rots in, in the cow herd. We'll see more diarrhea in the calves. Nothing that specifically targets the fact that you've got BVD in the herd. It just causes immunosuppression in that animal, allowing the more common disease processes to, to, 
to cause more say. problems. What we typically see with BVD is immunosuppression. This immunosuppression allows the more common disease processes to cause more problems in the animal. Uh, increased uh, bovine respiratory disease, uh, foot rots, uh, diarrhea in the calves herd. So the BVD just uh, influences or, or decreases the immune function of that calf and then any common pathogen tends to cause more problems. That once in a while with BVD you see this huge problem. That is just the tip of the iceberg and we very seldom see that. It's a slow, insidious robber. Most producers believe that they don't have BVD virus because they're not seeing BVD or diarrhea in their group. And they're not having these terrific wrecks that are discussed in the industry. And while BVD can have huge and tremendous impact and, and be really eye-opening, uh, those uh, circumstances we see uh, just once in a while. Uh, more times than not, you have no idea it's there and it's slowly robbing you in the background and gives you no indication that something's going on. It's just slowly taken away from you. That's what occurs most of the time, but every once in a while it will jump out at you and cause a huge impact.